Marion Spadone is on a mission to help people explore death in more comfortable and conscious ways. As a textile artist, she makes handmade shrouds that can be used for cremation or burial. She also conducts workshops that use art and ritual to explore grief and open conversations about death and dying. Lately, Marion's been winning awards with her lively and heart-melting lectures that raise awareness for home funerals, green burial, and transitional ceremonies that help us all come to grips with our journey to the other side. I'm Erin Donnelly, and this is Reveal What's Real. Marion, thank you so much for being here. Let's start off talking about the business. So how did this idea originate um, to become a voice and to develop products uh, regarding death? Well, in I think it was 2000, I was in England. I had been on a long meditation retreat and I came out of retreat and I was in an office waiting for a friend of mine and there was a bookshelf next to me. And on the shelf was a book called The Natural Death Handbook. And I was so curious about that title, so I pulled the book off the shelf and started reading it. And I started getting body rushes, really, shivering. And the whole book, the whole idea was about home, dying at home, and also having funerals at home. And I had never really heard of that before in present time. You know, it seemed like something that would happen a way long time ago. But I was really fascinated with it, and it made total sense to me. Mm -hmm. So when, and I'm an artist, and at the time I was painting on silk. And so when I got back to the States, I just, I don't actually know how I made that leap from this whole idea to shrouds, but I did. I thought I should make some hand-painted silk burial shrouds. So I went, I thought, I'll just Google shroud and get a pattern and it'll be easy. So did they talk about <laughs> shrouds in this book? They didn't. No. So how did that idea for this? I, I, this feels like grace to me. Yeah. It feels like, you know. Something opened my head, popped that idea in there, and closed it back. A shroud is... It's like a ceremonial wrapping of okay. the body of someone who has died. Mm -hmm. And they are something that was used in, you know, two or three hundred years ago in, in our present Western culture. Or even two hundred, even a hundred years ago, some people are, were still using shrouds. And you'll find sometimes in old folk songs, there'll be a lament of a woman talking about stitching up the shroud of her beloved or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those were the only things, plus then there's the great, the Shroud of Turin. Every time I would Google Shroud, that's what I would find from my Catholic upbringing, you know, the Shroud that was wrapped around Jesus. But I never found a pattern. Mm -hmm. So I just started making it up. Mm -hmm. And then I... Just out of like, as a project, not so yeah. much like, oh, I'm going to sell these or... Well, I did think these are needed. This is, because I'm also a person who's really into ceremony. Mm -hmm. And... I don't, it just made sense to me, like I knew about it somehow, like, oh, this whole concept needs shrouds. It needs shrouds so that people can put their hands on the body, so that people can interact, so they can wrap up their loved ones, so they can have this feeling of closure by doing this. Mm -hmm. There was just some innate way that I knew about that. I don't yeah. know where that came from. Mm -hmm. It feels really old to me. It does. With these shrouds, is it more, who's jumping on board at this point? Like, you know, the ones that you have sold, um, what did they say when they were buying it? You know, what, how did they find you? And um, I used to live in Ashland, which is a much smaller town. So I, some people just knew me because I had an art exhibit there with, which was actually a great way to get the word out. It was an art exhibit called Over My Dead Body, an exploration <laughs> of green burial and natural funerals. Nice. And That's so I, amazing marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And so I had all different burial containers, including my shrouds. And there was someone who came to that who eventually called me up later. Who, who said, I was di I'm dying. No, that his wife was dying. Mm -hmm. And so that was one way. And then other people who have bought shrouds from me are educators who are teaching other people to do home funerals. And so they've, they haven't found anything like this. And when they found me via my website or the various kinds of networking that I do, they've ordered a shroud so that they could show people this is a green option. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a funeral director in Seattle who specializes in green burial. Mm -hmm. So she has one of my shrouds as a demonstration also.
You have the shrouds. Yes, I have the shrouds. And then oh. you do workshops. Um, workshops. Teaching people just mm -hmm. to, how to open up conversations mm -hmm. ex about death, explore their fears. Their fears, their thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. I like to do artwork, so I have a, a workshop called Behind the Mask of Death, where people make masks, actually, where we just sort of get into a space of thinking about what our thoughts and fears and feelings are about death, and then we do collage work. I give them simple mask shapes. We make collages on the masks. Nice. And then we have, um, I have a friend who plays gongs for meditation. So everyone puts on their mask and does a gong journey with Carlo playing the gongs. And, and just people come out of those workshops with all sorts of information that they didn't have before mm -hmm. about, about what they really think and feel about death mm -hmm. and about what what they thought they would be afraid of and what they're no longer afraid of or what things they were able to let go of or whatever. So that's the, just the kind of work that I like to do. Yeah. And I like, there's, it seems to me that there's a lot of the work to be done around grief and around just having the conversation about death in, in the current vernacular because it's, it's separated. <clears throat> because we think if someone dies, the first thing we do is get on the phone and call the professionals. Right. You know, because we think it's illegal or it's creepy or it's even dangerous to touch a body. But it's not, you know, but how did we get that idea? Right. Because like two generations ago, people just did this. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's not that far It's not. My father said to me, after I'd been doing this for a while, he says, well, that's what we did when my grandmother died. Right. How is this revolutionary? Right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then he told me this great story about how they just, you know, the ladies came and washed the body and the men came and helped with the casket and then they put her in the parlor, in the casket. Yeah. And then when all the day of, you know, grieving and eating, as Italian families do, <laughs> when they all cleaned up and left, he said that his father and him, my father was 14 at the time, he and his father made up pallets in the living room next to the casket. And they slept there because he didn't leave the body alone. Oh. And I said to him, well, were you scared? And he said, why would I be scared? It was my grandma. Oh. And that's what we've lost. Yeah. That's what we've lost. Mm, gosh, even just hearing that story mm -hmm. makes you want to, not want to be put in that situation, but it definitely brings more, you know, it makes it more comfortable yes. to think about, more yeah. meaningful. And, yeah. Yeah. and people say that people who have done home funerals say that their grief was engaged much more quickly and moved through much more easily. Mm -hmm. I bet. When people learn about your work, what kind of negative reactions have you received? Is there anyone who said like, wow, this is really kind of inappropriate? Yes, yeah. Have you been uninvited to places? <laughs> yes, actually. Our people have said, well, that's pretty sick. You know, I, had, I talked oh. to a gallery owner one time and I said, I would love to do a show here, and this is the kind of work I do. And she just looked at me and she said, well, you're a sick puppy. I just thought, okay, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, or I've had, I've talked to um, New Thought Churches for a while. I went, I decided I'm going to see if I can reach out to different New Thought Churches and maybe do workshops for them to help their congregations put together like a burial society, a group of people, mm. like in the Jewish tradition. They ha I don't know if you know this, but in the Jewish tradition, there is a burial society, and there's a group of people who have committed to caring for the body in this very prescribed manner. And so that when somebody in the congregation dies, there's a pool of people to be called on, and there's a, a minimum number that need to be there. So they're there, and they take care of preparing the body and bathing it, and they do wrap the body in a very simple shroud and put into a very plain casket, and they're buried within 24 hours. And it's a very beautiful tradition, but I thought, well, well, let's make that for other people who don't have a spiritual tradition. And so I actually did form a burial society in Ashland, mm. and they're still there. Mm -hmm. But I, th I thought, well, I could talk to some New Thought churches and see if they want to help me have me come and do a workshop and help their congregation form something like this. And I was so surprised by the number of them that said to me directly, well, we don't talk about death. <laughs> I just thought, I'm on the phone with a pastor, and they're saying, we don't talk to our congregation about death. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, so they're not going to die? Like, why not? Why don't we talk about that? So, Well, even in the New Age community, they'll talk a lot about near-death experiences, mm -hmm. about past lives, mm -hmm. about, you know, crossing over. Mm -hmm. But they don't really talk about the reality of right. death, like why we're afraid of it. And it seems to me that people are more afraid of dying rather than death. I think that's true. You know, mm -hmm. and so do you talk about that in your workshops as well? Yeah, I do talk about that. Yeah. And I just think that there's, 
there's more than that, though. There's something about, I don't understand why this is, but there's all this, I think there's a deep fascination with death, but the way that it's cast, the light that it's cast in is creepy. You know, people say that to me a lot. What you're talking about is creepy. And I'm thinking, but why, why do you think that? Right. Why is it creepy? Why do we talk about it in a creepy way? Why are we fascinated with vampires now in our culture? Don't mm -hmm. you think that's interesting? Mm -hmm. And there's lots of TV shows now that deal with death, but they don't deal directly with death. You know, it's more like there's lots of killing, there's lots of horrific dying, but, but if you have like a TV show where people are actually just grieving around the death of someone, Sometimes there's a disclaimer beforehand that says this is, you know, difficult material for audiences. But I mean, what about the show where people just got blown up or, you know, right. body it's parts flying through the air? Yeah. Hmm. So. so, talk a little bit more about what's broken in this death industry. I mean, what if you could, you know, like recreate a scenario? What would it look like? This is a tricky area for me to get into because the industry is big and most funeral homes are owned by one of five large corporations. Really? It's down to that? So independent funeral homes aren't... They're scarce. Mm -hmm. There are a few, mm -hmm. but they're few and far between and, and it's hard for them because of the market the way that it is and because, you know, these bigger conglomerates own. And so that means they supply your, all of your products, your caskets and, you know, whatever your cremation yeah, and, and they, yeah. <clears throat> so you have to buy the product line from the company who owns your license. Mm -hmm. So it makes it hard. I mean, there are independents and there are some who retain the right to carry other product lines, but, but I just, it's a dilemma for me. It's a real dilemma. I don't want to fight up against, I mean, like, I don't want to be the David and Goliath thing. I, I don't want to spend my time fighting that. Mm -hmm. I just want to spend my time with people. People who get it already, almost. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could really understand that. And I just think my friend said, but Marion, you know what? You're like train changing the paradigm. Like, couldn't you pick something simpler to do? You know? Like, I mean, I, it's not like I'm selling toasters. I say that a lot to people, you know? It's just, I took a business course. Um, in the beginning, you know, with the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and we get there the first night, and you go around the room to say what your business is. And so they say, you know, coffee business, home improvement, scrapbooking, and we get to me and I say, burial shrouds. And people, to answer that question you asked me earlier, people did move away. I mean, they were freaked out. And I was there for 12 weeks in that course. And so, you know, they were like, oh God, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> Death lady. And, I mean, halfway through, somebody asked me a question. That this guy said, so let me, like, you mean you could have a theme funeral? I said, yeah, you could. So, like, if my dad was into hunting, I could paint animals on his casket? Yes, you could, mm -hmm. yes. And then they started to talk about it. And then another time, someone said to me, it's creepy what you're doing. And before I could even say anything, someone else in the class said, well, you know why it's creepy? Because whenever we talk about death, we talk about it in a creepy way. And I said, exactly. So... Just my presence in that group of people for that 12 weeks changed them. Yeah. Because by the end, when I brought in my prototype and I asked someone to try it on and I got everyone to line up around the table and said, okay, imagine, this is it. Your last time with this person that you love and you put this on them and it had a part that went over the head and a covering over the face and I said, here you go, this is the last thing you do. And everybody got really quiet. And some people teared up. And then they said to me, now we get it. Now we get it. This is really great what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm a Toastmaster. I just gave a speech about, I, t I talked about my work. And at the end of that, people came up to me and they tell me stories that they've been carrying around about death. Mm -hmm. But still, it's hard to say, okay, I'm going to do a workshop about death and have a set of people show up. Convince you know? people to, <laughs> yeah, come out from the sun to right. go talk right. about death. <laughs> <laughs> or people say, that's great, but I don't need one of those anytime soon. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, do you know that? Do you have your, is exactly. it on your calendar? <laughs> yeah. What kind of support are you needing in terms of this business? I mean, what, what would you love to see happen for your work? I would love to see more people come to my workshops. I would love to have the conversation about death be more of an everyday thing. Um, 
I would love to do more art exhibits yeah. because that was a really good way to get people in the space of seeing things like when they weren't in an immediate need situation. You know, it wasn't yes. like somebody just died, now I have to go look at caskets. Right, it plants the seed right. in a really, you know, right. um, nice setting. Yeah, and when that happened, that exhibit was up for a month and people came back a lot mm -hmm. to look at them. Mm -hmm. So I'd like more of that, Yeah. but I would like, yeah, I just would like people to be willing to talk to me ahead of time, to be willing to engage their creativity. Like, I'd like to do a year-long class where people would make their own burial shroud. And we would talk about all sorts of stuff, all of our fears and thoughts and anxieties, what our experiences were. We could do various kinds of writing exercises, yeah. rituals. It can, you can help them create an advanced directive, yes. help them write their will, mm -hmm. and then the shroud can be purchased right then even, mm -hmm. put up in their closet. Right, exactly. Or they could make the shroud, exactly. or they could embellish a shroud that I made. Because mm -hmm. if we had a year and we were meeting once a month, there would be lots of time to just bring everything they had into it. And these shrouds are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's show one, for instance, and I, I really admire the work that you're doing helping women who have had abortions or mm -hmm. miscarriages mm -hmm. to find some peace. And you have a, a beautiful, sweet little baby shroud mm -hmm. yeah. that you'd like to show. Yeah, I just made these. It's a very recent. So they open out like this with little wings. This um, tie and crisscross is a signature feature of all the shrouds that I make. They always have this lacing up feature. But this is made with a sort of a lightweight cotton that kind of tucks in around over the baby and then laces up. And then you can just fold the wings in like this. So Now does that is that then put into something else and then they're buried? Yeah, I think that's probably what would happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I just made these, so I'm waiting to hear how people use them. And it depends. Some, some people just want a shroud. Yeah. You know, just want to be able to tuck a baby or a person into the earth with nothing else. Mm -hmm. But some people would put this inside of a casket, I think. Sure, I think it can go either way. Mm -hmm. Besides you, what kind of support are, are these women getting who, you know, or who are grieving? Well, right, in hospitals, I've been told that there really isn't anything like this offered. Mm -hmm. There are, some hospitals have like a supply of small boxes, but I don't even know what they look like. Um, I talked to a midwifery student who said she, she was in the NICU unit and there wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. And so one of my ideas is that I would love to make these, I would love to find a hospital that would have a foundational grant or an endowment that would then contract with me to just have a supply of these on hand. Right. So that when the counselor came to talk with parents who had lost a child, they could just give them this. Yeah. So they would have this because the act of wrapping this, you know, tucking the baby in and then lacing it up, that's part of a ceremony that creates a closure for people. Mm -hmm. And when in the, the shrouds that I have for adults, that's what people have told me. Once they start into that process, they line up on either side of the person and they pass the ribbons back and forth and lace them through and pass them back and forth. And then it just gets this rhythm happening into this ritual. People have said to me, oh, this is the ritual, isn't it? Mm -hmm. say, yes, it is. And it gives time for them to have that feeling of closure. Right. Hands on. Hands on, yeah. yeah. Have you been with a lot of dying people? I've been with dying people. What's interesting to me is I've never been with someone at the moment of death. Wow. And even though I've trained as a death midwife, I have not had a lot of opportunity to help families with this. Mm -hmm. I had some, but not very much. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a question for me, like, why do I have all this training and what is it all for? Like, what, there's some career, if you will, that's coming together that doesn't exist in our culture that I'm trying to be and I don't know what to call it, and I don't know how to market it. I don't know how to put myself out there in a clear way that people can understand, you know, because, because when they, they think I'm a funeral director, which I'm not, mm -hmm. and if I'm not that, then they think that I, they don't have any need for me. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, some people will look at my shrouds and say, wow, that's really cool, but I don't need one of those anymore. Not, like, it'll be a while before I need that. Yeah. So. It almost seems to me like maybe your role could be in helping people how to, to um, express their own originality. That's a big piece of what I want to say to people. Yeah. yeah. You can design this. I, one of my favorite clients is a woman who 
there's, she's fine, she's perfectly healthy, but she wanted to have her shroud made so that her family didn't have to worry about it. And we had great talks about the images that she wanted quilted on it, and she helped me refine my design a little bit because she wanted it to be a certain way. And we did this beautiful quilting with, it had fish, and it had rivers, and a sun, and yeah, it was great, you know, and that's, and she was happy about it. Every time we met, we laughed. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That you bring it. tons of humor to this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <you're> just <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like to laugh. I, don't, I really think we could just lighten up about the whole thing. Well, and with the shrouds, it, it is almost like your final outfit. Yeah. And when I was growing up, I, if I got a great new outfit, I'd always tell my mom, make sure you bury me right. in this one, just in case <laughs> anything happens. Every time I make a new shroud that I really like, I tell my daughter that same thing. You know, I've like made several different over the years, and yeah. every time I get my newest one, I'm like, this is the one, this is the well, one. Well, that was one of my questions for you. Do you have your own shroud? Mm -hmm. I okay. do. I would hope so. And it has big, beautiful quilted wings, and it has a really nice piecework, patchwork top that I made for it, and it's my favorite colors, and yeah. So what would be a perfect death for you? <laughs> mm. A perfect death? Well, I would be pretty old, because <laughs> I want to be around long enough to see this whole paradigm change. Yeah. And then I would just kind of be meditating one day, and then open my eyes and say, ah, I hear that knock on the door, okay. And hopefully, people that I love would be around so I could say a quick goodbye, and then I would just lay down and be gone. Drift away. Yeah. And what do you think will happen after that? Do you have oh, a fixed opinion? I, I like to not have a fixed opinion, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I do have a fixed opinion. But I think something will happen. I don't think that it's just nothing after we die. Mm -hmm. I think there's a consciousness that continues in some fashion, and I'm very curious about that. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of information now from a lot of different spiritual traditions, so there's a part of me going, huh, it'll be interesting to see which one is true, <laughs> you know, as if there's one true. But I don't know. I like to think that I'll, there's some part of me that will continue on. Yeah. And so what about specific religious organizations? Are they, are there do, does this, do these shrouds go against any particular religious tradition? Not that I'm aware of. And, and gosh, yeah, so how do we get them to even talk mm -hmm. about this? Mm -hmm. So what is it? Why are we so afraid to go there, do you think? <laughs> Aaron, if I knew the answer to that. Gosh, mm. well, I bet there was a part of that in your Toastmasters speech that came through. I mean, you won first prize. <laughs> what do you think people liked about that? Well, they tell me that they're relieved, really, because I, this is, I say this as a joke, but I say that most of us are secretly dying to talk about death. I yeah. just think we are. Yeah. But we just want to do it with somebody who isn't going to freak out or who isn't going to assume that we're depressed, which is another thing that stops people from talking about death or that people will say they're like, like that woman said to me, you're a sick puppy, you know, I mean, like, you don't want somebody to say that about you. So I like to be the person who says, talk to me about it. And then when people do, they tell me how relieved they are. So, so there's that piece, you know, that there is a secret wanting to do it. But there's an invisibility, like the workshop that I did this weekend, which was for women who have had abortions, because there's a, an invisibility to that grief. You know, there's not even acknowledging that as a death, to be grieved. Mm -hmm. And in our culture now, when people, someone dies, well, how often do you hear someone say, it's time to get over it now, honey? You know, it's been a week. You're like, it's been a week. You know, and there was a time not that long ago when we knew we wore black because that told the people in our community that we were somebody that needed a little extra information and care. We needed a little space. We needed a buffer. So you wore the widow's weeds, they called them, and people just gave you a little extra space. And so you didn't have to have the conversation, look, I forgot this, or I'm not doing well today because my husband just died two weeks ago. You didn't have to say any of that. It was known by what you were wearing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff that's just gone out now, you know, where you just are supposed to get over it and it's just a body. Sometimes people would say that to me. It's just a body. You can do whatever you want with it. And I figured out it's actually part of ecology to care for our own dead. It's the ecology of the community. The emotional community has to be attended to. Because when someone we love dies, our circle has a break in it. And so a funeral or a wake or a vigil 
helps to heal that on the emotional level, and that's really important. Whether or not everyone in that circle thinks that that person who died, oh, it's just a body, they just dropped the body. You can have all those, you know, vaguely Buddhist sentiments, but, but the reality is someone that we loved isn't there anymore, and we have to do something about that. Mm -hmm. We have to feel that. We have to say, something is lost. We have to cry about it, and then we can go forward. Yeah. I think you just nailed it on the head. It's the emotional piece that we're mm -hmm. not, everyone wants to, you know, be happy, look on the positive right. side, mm -hmm. you know, think optimistic, right. visualize what you want to see. Right. But this is, yeah, there's no escaping grief. <laughs> and there's no escaping death. You know? And there's no escaping <laughs> death. I mean, that's... And so, yeah, and I think that the pendulum is swinging. I think that, you know, you see in New Age teachings now, we're learning to talk about the shadow and learning about yes. shame and imperfection yes. and just exhaustion and really identifying yeah. that. And so I believe that the pendulum will swing in your way. I and think is you're swinging. right. I think it is. You're right. I mean, because now even like people that are my age or the baby boomers, you know, yeah. we're just on the edge of going, I'm immortal. I'm immortal. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm not immortal. Actually, I probably am going to die. You know, they're yes. just starting to say that. And then Hmm. And the baby boomers are a powerful group because they can affect so many generations. Yes. They have parents that are older, they have yeah. kids, they have grandchildren. Yeah. And so I really see the baby boomers as being a strong voice. I do too. Changing death. And maybe that is where your business really starts taking off is that you can be someone who goes to talk to baby boomers mm -hmm. about helping people open up conversations mm -hmm. about death. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope to God somebody out there is watching this <laughs> and hires you and pays Thank you a pretty penny for that. <laughs> Thank Several you, of them. Thank you. Yeah, and anything, um, you know, if anyone's watching today and wants to get in touch with you for mm -hmm. workshops or shrouds mm -hmm. to set up an art show. Yes, that would um, be great. Your website is a fine farewell. That's right. www.afinefarewell.com. Yeah. And all the information is there. And yeah, local Portland business. Wow, really admire the work you're doing. Thank Thanks, you Sarah. for being on Reveal What's Real. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>